私にマフラーを巻いてくれてありがとう That is a short snippet of the incredibly talented Yui Ishikawa, an S tier Seiyu who played so many legendary characters in the past decade, like Mikasa, Violet Evergarden, 2B, Enterprise, etc. etc. I made a pretty in depth video about her experiences of being Violet's VA, which I will include a link down below, but I really want to focus on the role that completely changed her life, which was Mikasa Ackerman. Especially with AOT anime slowly ending, I wanted to share Ishikawa's fascinating stories playing this iconic character. Revy, light this baby up! The crazy thing is, Yui never wanted to become a Seiyu in the first place. In 1995, at the super early age of 6, she joined the theater company Himawari in Osaka. Due to her raw, amazing talents as an actor, she started to appear in the main musical performances for her company. And really, all throughout junior and high school, Yui's life revolved around acting in these said musicals. However, during one of her performances as a high schooler, somebody from the anime industry attended her performance and was blown away by her acting skills. It was this same person who asked her to audition for a voice acting role, which was a role she eventually got. Now her life completely changed when she auditioned for the role of AOT's Mikasa Ackerman. The remarkable thing is she kind of stumbled upon this audition by pure coincidence. Yui admitted she never read AOT manga until she was offered this audition role. Even crazier, she never read any manga growing up. So, reading her first manga, AOT, she was instantly hooked. Yui really wanted to become part of this project. Going into the AOT auditions itself, it was a really tense environment because the acting directions itself was non existent. She had no choice but to interpret Mikasa's character as best as she could. Ishikawa always talks about creating an image of a character's voice, where after reading the source material, you're able to hear a voice in your head. And over time, able to create a frank image that represents the character. With this strong ability to storytell through voice acting, and with her many years of acting in various musicals, Yui Ishikawa was able to land the role of Mikasa Ackerman at the age of 24. Now, you might be thinking, okay, she got this amazing role, end of story, right? Oh no. Homegirl had to put in a lot of work. Firstly, Yui admitted the great difficulty of voicing Mikasa. She shares the greater the emotional expression of the character, the more various expressions you could think of. But Mikasa is a character who has a strong core and doesn't show her emotions much. Not only is Mikasa a complex character to play, Yui also doesn't get much instructions from the director when it comes to acting, so she always feels unsure if her interpretation of Mikasa was correct. But what really motivated Yui was that she found out that this role was picked specifically for her by Isayama Sensei himself. It was this very faith in her acting skills that pushed Yui to give it her all in her new role as Mikasa. We talking about effort, but another big thing that Yui had to overcome was her financial difficulties. We found out recently that Yui even worked part time at a sushi restaurant to get by. 
バイトやめたもんねやめたもんね<笑>そうです最初の頃バイトしてたもんねそう寿司屋でバイトしてたもんねそうですね、うん、まあ結構始まってからもずっとやってましたけど一気中は少なくともやってたよねずっとやってましたよね数年間多分やってたんですけどやってたよね、うん、まだやめないのって言ってたもんねそう毎回毎回そうそう,<笑>そろそろそう食べに行こうかなって After I found out about this story I was completely shocked and my respect for her went up tenfold Not only did she have to do voice acting classes, memorize her lines, really, really deliver on her lines to prove that she could play a main character role, you even had to work late at night at a Tokyo sushi joint to get by. She may be laughing about it now, but we know this is not easy by any stretch of imagination. In my various research about Yui, I think what really helped her persevere was the support of her fellow seiyus of the AOT cast. ずっと私の前を走って導いてくださっていたのでなんか本当にもう私はただひたすらお二人の後を追いかけてきっと二人がいてずっとこう引っ張ってくれたから今の私がいるんだなっていうのはすごく感じているので気づいたら追い越してね、うん、いやいや追い越してない,<笑>ない,ないじゃないですよね<笑>何をおっしゃる<笑>で女優賞に輝きましたね<笑><笑> And it's not even with the main cast themselves. She was able to get really close with the AOT cast as a whole. I was able to get really close with the AOT cast as a whole. I was able to get really close w i 自体もすごく絆が,が強く生まれていて。As you observe countless clips of Yui being silly with other AOT seiyus, you learn very quickly that these people aren't just work colleagues, but they're really for her every step of the way. And it's this excellent dynamic of you trust her work colleagues on one hand, and on the other hand, you take your role very seriously. あの日本では全員一緒に集合して収録するので。そんな大切なシーンの時にお腹を透かしてグーってならないようにしなきゃいけないとかあと咳き込んでしまってはいけないとかっていうのがあったのでそういう面ではすごく毎回とても緊張感があって大変でした。You know these people ain't playing games when they're even conscious about their bodily noises disturbing recording. But it was this very tense environment that Yui shared was what allowed her to concentrate to get into Mikasa's role. Apart from this amazing support group, it is her extreme humbleness that gives Yui her career longevity. Even after winning the Seiyu Award not once, but twice, she still admits that she doesn't have a beautiful voice. In a 2022 Japanese interview, the interviewer asked, You are known for your beautiful voice. What do you do to keep your voice beautiful? Yui responds, I have never thought of my voice as beautiful. Many VAs have a distinctive voice, such as a cute voice or low voice, but not me. Choto kate mate. Yui, I love you, but I never ground pounded the X doubt button this hard in my life. You not having a distinctive voice? Shit, hit me with that Angel Beats memory reset. And when you play me one line from Violet Evergarden, I'll probably get all of my memory back 100%. Some people could define Yui's career to be one of luck. She is lucky to be performing in a musical when an anime industry person was in the audience. Or she was lucky to be casted for Mikasa right before AOT anime took over the world. However, from following her journey, I could clearly point to her resilience as being the it factor of why she got so far in her career. From bouncing between voice acting for Mikasa to working a physically taxing part time job at a restaurant. From attending her countless seiyu duties to her dealing with horrendous death threats to the point of her own company needing to take legal actions. From pouring out her all into amazing roles like Violet Evergarden to dealing with the heartbreak of the Kyo Annie fires. Yui Ishikawa. Is honestly as strong as the female characters she plays. And I could clearly say she's here to stay. 
Guys, if you mess with these videos, consider joining my Patreon. Apart from the countless hours of research that goes into each of these projects, I also do pay for translation sometimes out of my own pocket for Japanese clips I want to use. If I could fund these future translation jobs, it would help me tremendously. Anyways guys, thank you for checking out today's video. This has been your boy Yi-Man. Until next time, peace out.